In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the DAM standard brush. So to load this brush up, let's just go ahead and tap B and then D for the D brushes. And you can see right here, if we tap S for DAM standard, or you can click it here, it's going to go ahead and load this up for us. So this is kind of similar to the setup that I used to use for um, my standard brush, where I would have it on the standard brush, and then I'd have an alpha, and I would like to use this alpha 39 um, with the lazy mouse on. But there's just some different options on this brush, and the alpha is really, really nice for pulling a point. Uh, this brush just has become probably one of my favorite brushes, definitely for de doing detail. I like the clay brush, clay tubes brush a lot, but I really like this brush and I doubt I could probably live without it anymore. Well, I could live without it, but it'd be hard to do what I'm doing sculpting wise. Um, I had, had to find another way to get these kind of strokes. So let's just take a look at this. Um, when you draw on the model, you can see it's going to give you this nice kind of crease. And it's going to kind of pull the surface in just slightly whenever it drags on there. So it's kind of like, uh, feels like to me like you're melting the surface away as if it's like just kind of like soft butter. But then you get this really cool kind of knife where you're just carving into it. Um, you're just going to have to play around with the brush to kind of get a feel for it. But I'm able to get some... I don't know, just some really cool looks with this. And if you hold down Alt, you know, you're going to be able to bring things out to a point. So you can do this kind of work as well. But I found that this is really cool for doing this hard surface stuff, just to kind of emphasize edges a little bit just ever so slightly you can do that kind of work but then you can also make the brush uh, really small and you can use it for wrinkles and it does a really nice job of emulating what would happen with uh, skin folds you can see that there is kind of a a little bit of a dot pattern to it if you're not careful. Um, that has to do with this lazy step. We've kind of looked at that in another video, how to set up the lazy mouse. Uh, this one uses the lazy mouse, so I like to maybe take this and drag it down to 0 0.01. You can drag it all the way to zero if you want. It's up to you how you want to use the brush. Um, I just always give it a little bit. So we're on here like this. We've got the lazy radius is actually set to one, which is basically like nothing. Um, as you drag this lazy radius further, you're going to see that that trail behind your stroke is going to get longer and it's going to average out your your mouse stroke. Having it down here on one like this is going to let you basically just freehand sketch and you don't have to worry about the lazy mouse, but you're getting some of the benefits of having lazy mouse turned on. But if you want to try to do some more accurate lines that are going to be long and sweeping, then you might want to turn um, the lazy radius up a little bit more. So you can see I'm going to go through and try to emphasize some of these shapes. And like I was saying, I like to use this a lot for just detailing and just emphasizing uh, something that's already been sculpted that's there. So I'm going to hold down Alt here and drag along this edge to build this up along the back. And now I'm just going to draw right in here. Something to note. Um, if you have symmetry turned on and as you get closer to the middle it just snaps automatically. You can see those points just snap. Um, that's actually a really good thing because then you know you're directly on the center and you can just drag out from there and it's going to help you build a better line coming off the center. So 
So you could even do stuff like this where you're just drawing these lines out. And maybe that's some kind of padded area within here. And if you wanted to cut into the surface, going up here, just smooth that out a little bit. So you can see here's where we can start just really emphasizing some of these shapes and we can build lines that make it look like it's got maybe um, separate pieces on this model here and it's been built up into these different shapes. We can really carve into these areas here and emphasize the separation between this shape here and this shape here. And if you don't like the uh, results, just keep hitting undo. Even if I wanted to hit that edge even more, I can hold down Alt and drag on there. See this? We haven't remeshed our uh, DynaMesh in a while, so I'm just going to hold down Control and drag a marquee in the open viewport. And you can see it's kind of washed out some of that detail. See how this is nice and crisp? And that kind of washes that detail out. I'm going to hit undo. And we'll take a look at DynaMesh. Make sure blur is set to zero. Uh, groups turned on. That doesn't really matter right now at this point. The resolution, it might be time to bump up the resolution a little bit. So let's go a little bit higher, maybe 350. And then remesh. Now you can see things did change a little bit, but it didn't change quite as much. Um, so we want to keep that number as low as possible, but still try to retain um, the detail that we have going on in our model. Um, you just uh, The larger you go with this number and you remesh, it's going to take a little bit more time for the computer to sit there and think about what it's got to do. So we want to keep that time factor as low as possible so we can just sculpt and remesh and then just move on from right there. So you want to keep things as low as possible but still retaining the detail level that you're looking for. And at some point you just might have to um, it just might have to go to the highest level and you just have to deal with how long it takes to remesh which it really isn't that long at all but you want this process to be as seamless as possible you want it to be something that you're not really thinking about very much so again I'm just trying to emphasize some of these some of these lines and at this point you can work with building up these lines and then going and hitting your polish brush so B and then P for polish and then hit O or tap that right there and you can see I can just quickly polish these surfaces up to make it cleaner Get a nice crisp edge running along there. And something I did in between videos, um, I noticed that the uh, the drawing quality of the screen looked a little rough and it was kind of torn. Um, I just took my document and made it a little bit higher resolution. So my actual monitor resolution is 1600 by 1200. So I went ahead and changed that. Um, by changing these numbers here and let's just say this is 1100 and then this resize will become available after you change these numbers you can go ahead and hit that and say yes to resize your document at that point it's going to drop your model to the canvas like it's a uh, 2d image you can hit control n to clear your canvas and then we can click and drag our model under the canvas 
And then when you're ready to start working on it, just hit edit or tap T. And now we're back in the sculpting mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and change my document to 1200 resize. I'm gonna go through this process again. So see how I'm able to draw a bunch of copies of these on the screen, which is kind of cool if you're doing illustrations and stuff like that. But for what we're using it for, it's not really going to um, do us any good. So as soon as I'm ready to sculpt, I can just click and drag a copy and then hit T to go into edit. And you can see now I've got a bunch of different copies floating all over the place. To clear out the canvas, it's just control N and that clears your canvas. And at that point you're working just on your model again. I just wanted to um, emphasize that because you could probably see in the quality of the earlier videos, it was looking kind of rough, especially when we had the um, material cap gray on there. And um, I was kind of wondering why it was kind of looking the way that it did. So if you get some similar results, you might want to look at the um, resolution of your canvas and try to up that a little bit and see what you get away with for that. So I'm going to uh, move on to the next uh, section of the video. I'm just going to have a little bit of fun doing some detail lines on here um, using this uh, damn standard brush. And um, just have fun with this part. It's kind of fun to get to this stage where you're just kind of adding some detail strokes.